Okay, I am going to show everybody how to make homemade bread. It's really easy. I make it all the time. Uh, it just it just takes time is all. So you're going to need bread flour or all-purpose flour, instant active dry yeast, some type of oil, canola, vegetable, whatever you use, sugar, salt, water, that's it. Uh, first off, we're going to start with um, hot water. I usually get mine straight out of the tap as hot as it'll go because by the time I get it into the mixer bowl, it's already cooled down a little bit. You put one-fourth cup of hot water in your mixer bowl. Then I have one and a half tablespoons of my yeast and a teaspoon of sugar. Put it in. All the sugar does is kind of feed the yeast. And the hot water activates it. And you want to just kind of mix this around. Stir it up. Kind of get it down off the sides. Mix it up a little bit. And you just want to let this set for 5 or 10 minutes. It'll foam up. Um, if your yeast is good, it'll foam up. And then that kind of tells you when it's ready to go. If you've got, if your yeast is good enough, then you shouldn't have any trouble. Um, just like I said, mix that up and let that set. Give it just a few minutes and come back and check on it. Okay, as you can see, uh, the I've given it just a few minutes and the yeast is starting to foam up. So you can. Okay. That probably made everybody really dizzy, sorry. I'm new at this, so you're going to have to bear with me. Okay, so now what we're going to do next is we're going to add about four cups of bread flour to our yeast. I don't, you don't want to pack it down or anything. I just, um, just kind of smooth it out and even it out. You're just going to add those four cups into this and you can do all this by hand if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer um, you can do it by hand it's just going to take a little more time and a little more effort I think that was four I've lost count now so put it on the first speed on your mixer and let it mix in your yeast And it's still going to be pretty dry because we've got to add our water and our oil yet. But it'll kind of get that yeast mixture blended in. Let that mix for just a minute. Then we're going to add in one and a half teaspoons of salt and a third of a cup of sugar. And you can, like, stop your mixer and just kind of... Take a spatula and kind of pull everything up off the bottom to make sure you get all that yeast off the bottom of the mixer bowl. That way everything's mixed in pretty well. Okay. Just let that mix up and get combined well. Okay, then after we get that mixed up pretty good, you're going to add one-fourth of a cup of whatever oil you're using and one and three-fourths cup of your warm water. Again, I just run it straight from the top hot because it's going to cool down a little bit by the time I get it to the mixer. Just let that blend. And then you're going to add your remaining flour. And it calls for anywhere between five to six cups total of flour. I don't think I have ever gone to six cups. Uh, you turn it up on speed two also after you add your liquid stuff. Uh, you just add the rest of your flour in a half a cup at a time. What what you you don't want your dough to be super sticky. This is really not really sticky today. Sometimes I think the weather affects 
the stickiness and you know just the overall consistency of the dough so we're probably not going to add a ton and i'm going to stop right now and i'm going to kind of clean my bowl again just to make sure everything's just kind of mixed in together because you get a lot of crumbly stuff in the bottom of your bowl and that will uh kind of clump up in your dough in your bread dough some you can work it out some when you take it out or when you go before you go to cover it but you can feel your dough and you can feel that you know because see it's still sticking to my hands pretty good so you can feel that it's fairly sticky you just want to put in a little bit at a time and it pulls the pulls the dough I, i'll try to show you here away from the pulls the dough away from the sides of the bowl when it starts getting to the point where it needs to be I need an assistant okay okay you can hear it the mixers pulling down quite a bit so it's still it's not I've only added another half cup so I'm gonna stop with that at this point and I'm gonna put a little bit more in and just try to work it around with my hands a little that way I can kind of get a feel for what it feels like if you do this very much then you'll learn to tell just by the feel of the dough you know if you think it's ready and honestly I think this one is ready because uh, you know see it's it's not sticking to my fingers anymore it's not pulling away with my fingers so it looks pretty good it's still pretty rough on the bottom you can turn it over and just try to work that over into the dough and you can pull it up out and use your hands to work it into a workable ball and then you just put it back down in your mixer bowl Braden can you come bring me the cooking spray please I have an assistant I forgot he was in there yes thank you okay and then all you're gonna do here is just spray a little like coating of cooking spray on top of your on top of your dough and then you get about all the plastic wrap which is always like this something else I do usually when I start making my bread I go ahead and and turn my oven on 350 degrees because I like to set my bread on top of the stove not like directly over a vent but like maybe in the center between the two back burners so it gets that little extra added bit of heat to uh, help help it raise. And then just seal your plastic wrap around your bowl so it's fairly tight so no air can get in. And that's it. You're going to let this set until it doubles in size. It should come almost up to the top of your bowl. Um, probably, I don't know, an hour maybe it'll take. It kind of depends on the temperature in your house and... You know, of course, how warm your stove is and all that. Um, but we will check back when it's to the next point and see how it looks. So hang in there. Okay, here we are. Our bread has been sitting on the stove for about an hour. And it's probably more than doubled in size. I'm just going to put a little bit of flour down on my parchment paper sheet here. Just take the plastic off and flour on your hands so nothing sticks. Just punch your dough down so it deflates. And you can use a scraper to get it out or you can use your hands. Just take it out of your bowl. If there's any rough spots in the bottom, I try to work that in. Brush off any extra flour that's on it. I think my paper stuck to it. Just flour it a little bit. 
kind of work it around a little. Okay, we're, normally this makes two loaves of bread, and I usually do two loaf pans. But right now, I'm trying to make like an actual loaf of bread, like store-bought size loaf of bread, so Steve can use it to take sandwiches for lunch. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take about three-fourths of this here, and I'm gonna separate it just like this, just cut a hunk off. And this part, I'm gonna flatten it out. You just lay your bread out. If there's any rough, hard pieces that just didn't get mixed in good, I try to pick them out, because they'll just kinda be weird in your bread. It won't kill anybody, but it's not as pretty. Just make sure you're floured well here. And just uh, put it like in a, rectangle shape, flatten it out, okay? And then this here, I think I'm just gonna, just gonna make it into rolls uh, for supper, into yeast rolls. There's a little rough spot in there I'm gonna pull out. I don't, I don't know what this is. I normally don't have this. I just must not have got it mixed up well. Kinda distract it with the camera, but Hopefully I'll get better. So I'm just going to flatten this out just in a rectangle shape. And then you're going to let this rest here on the counter. I'm going to cover it with a clean towel. I try to use like a linen type towel that doesn't have any fuzz on it. Just cover it over with the towel and let it rest for 10 minutes. Then we'll be back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay. It's been about 10 minutes and here's where we're at. Okay, I'm gonna pull these to the side. Let me reflower my hands after I washed them. I gotta put more flour back on. Okay. <clears throat> what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna take this. I'm gonna stretch it a little bit because here's my pan. This is called a Pullman pan. This is a lot longer than an average loaf pan. But like I said, this is gonna make more of a an actual loaf size, store-bought loaf size bread. I've never made it with this ratio of bread dough, so I'm curious to see how it's gonna turn out. I'm just gonna roll it up, which is what I normally do for my uh, bread dough. I'm just gonna try to roll it up here. I kinda tuck my ends in so it's not open. Tuck them all in, and then kinda pinch your seams up. It's gonna be a little long here. I'm gonna try to keep it about the right length of the pan. I just kind of pinch everything together and then flip it over. Well, let's try this again. Okay, let me turn it over. Try to get it in as good a loaf shape as I can. And just pick it up and lay it down in your pan. Flop it down in. And just, you want to spray your pan so your bread don't stick in there. Just put it down in there. There it is, it's in the pan, all ready to go, okay? And this one, I'm going to, uh, I'll be right back, I forgot my pan for that. put them in a round baking dish or like a, pie, a cake pan spray it I'm just gonna pinch off little balls of dough just roll them in a circle kind of try to form them in a circle best you can and I'm gonna put them in there normally this wouldn't even take this long because you'd just be shaping it into two loaves you just want to use I just use, normally use the same size pan like you'd put a meatloaf in or bake a banana bread or something like that in. Okay. 
This guy pinches bottom end up. Pull away from the side a little bit. I've never actually made rolls with this dough, so I'm kind of curious to see how how they turn out. Now, if I can just figure out what I'm going to cook for supper tonight, I'll be doing good. Okay, we've got, got one pan done here. The hardest part of making this bread is waiting for it to cool so you can slice it and try it. Because it smells really good. If I make this and the boys are here, they can wipe out a half loaf. in one setting. So just be warned, if you start making this bread, you better be prepared to make it because everybody's gonna really like it. This is the same recipe that I made that I sold at the Carlisle shop and the local 68 in Maysville. This is the same bread recipe that I use. It's, it's just called uh, Amish yeast bread. Super easy to make. Kendall's learned to make it. It's not hard at all. The most important thing is make sure your yeast has a good date and it is good and active and that's pretty much it. I mean, nothing to it. When we get this done, we're going to put it back on the stove top. This is your last time that you're going to raise it. I might have got some of them a little small, but that's okay. We'll have slider buns. Put it back on the stove top. And we're going to let it, uh, I think it's like a half hour. Let me see. Let me look. The, you think I'd know this by heart. Yeah, it's for 30 minutes. You let it sit and raise. You're going to cover it again with your towel. Sit on the stove top. Let it raise for 30 minutes. You just don't want to over-raise your bread. Uh, you just, you know, I'm going to bake it when it gets about... Almost level to the top of the pan is when I'll go ahead and put it in the oven. You don't want to let it go too far. I will be back when it's time to put it in the oven. Okay, here we go. Let's get some light on the... Here's our bread. So we're going to pop it in the oven. My funny looking little rolls. We're going to pop it in the oven and... See how that goes. Okay, here we go. If I can man the camera here. Here's our loaf of bread out. And here is one pan of rolls because the other pan has been hit by the three kids. And they're gone. So I'm not a very good cameraman here. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better. So, it baked about 30 minutes or so. Just keep an eye on it. Um, I, uh, honestly, I like to, if I have any doubts, I will do a temperature check on mine. Just stick a thermometer in it and see how warm it is and to make sure that it's done inside. Especially in a big pan like this. Let's see what this one's going to show. Just stick the thermometer down in it. Yeah, it's already up to 190 degrees. So it's certainly done inside. Just to make sure you don't want doughy bread. And then I'm going to see if I can turn this big heavy pan out without burning my fingers. I don't leave mine sitting in the pan for very long. Because I don't want it to sit and steam. So I try to roll it out. Uh oh, I lost it. Okay, here we go. And there we go. 
There's my loaf of bread for the week. And it's pretty much the size of a loaf of store-bought bread. Might not be quite as tall, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So give it a try. Let me know how it turns out. See you later.